Hi, this is Nathan Batty with ChristianResearcher.com, and we're thankful you've joined us for another study in the book of Hebrews. Today we pick up where we left off last week in Hebrews chapter 3, beginning in verse 7. The Hebrew writer has just discussed how Jesus is greater than Moses and that God has appointed Jesus as the head of his own house and has given him all authority to reign in that kingdom. Now, in the last verse, he points out verse 6, whose house we are, that is the church, Christians, we are the house of God, if we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. That little conditional clause, if, becomes a pivotal uh, statement within this teaching and is full, further developed in the coming verses. Beginning in verse 7, he quotes from Psalm chapter 95. And we begin reading here in verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear His voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion and the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works forty years. Therefore I was angry with that generation and said, They always go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, They shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end, while it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Now, there are several points that I want you to to make as we go through this teaching. Number one, he quotes from Psalm chapter 95, verses 7 through 11. And you do yourself a favor if you would go back to the book of Psalms, find that psalm and underline verses uh, 7 through 11, and then draw yourself a note in the margin referring you to Hebrews chapter 3 because it's a pivotal point that is brought forth. Now, there are several possible reasons why he quotes from Psalm chapter 95. First of all, what you may not realize is that this is the opening text that was read at every worship assembly on the Sabbath in the synagogue. This is where they began reading. This is what they wanted to remind each other of. And they would begin, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in the day of the rebellion. So they would remind their folks, listen up to what God has to say so that we don't go through the same thing our forefathers went through. This passage number two served as a sober reminder of Israel's unfaithfulness to God. The reason they went off into captivity, the reason they suffered all the things that they suffered throughout their history was because they failed to listen to these words. And so they would read this at the beginning of their worship assemblies. Number three, this passage stresses the importance of listening to the voice of God. If you are going to be his children and be obedient, you must listen to what God has to say. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. Number four, this passage highlights the problem of unbelief and unfaithfulness, which are now the crux of the issue in Hebrews chapter 3. Beware of unbelief and unfaithfulness, for if you are not aware of that, the same thing will happen to you that happened to the people back over in olden times. Beginning in verse 12 and going down through the rest of the chapter, ending in verse 19, you have this story that is brought up that gives commentary on what Psalm 95 was talking about. He's referring to Numbers chapter 13 and chapter 14 and this, the series of events that took place at Kabesh Barnea. And he wants to remind his listeners of those events and use it as commentary on Psalm 95. Now, if you'll notice in verse 12, the introductory of the commentary, and in verse 19, the conclusion of the commentary on this section of Scripture, the same theme is introduced in both passages. Notice it says, Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. You go to verse 19. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. That's the major theme that's being talked about here, unbelief. And it's the only time that theme is addressed in the book of Hebrews. So take note of that phrase. There are three major points that he's wanting to get across in explaining Psalm 95, beginning in verse 12 and down through verse 19. 
First of all, look at Hebrews chapter 3, verse 15. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. First of all, he's reminding them, you have to listen up. Why is listening important? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews chapter, I mean, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. If we're going to have faith, we're going to have to listen up. Also, hearing and obedience are linked together just as a hardening of the heart and rebellion are linked together. He's using this in a negative light. He says, don't harden your heart and don't become rebellious as they were back then. The opposite of that is also being implied here and necessarily implied. He's saying, listen up and become obedient, unlike those who refused to listen and became rebellious. Now, here's a point that you may not know. In the Greek, the word for hear is the word akuo, and the word for obey is the word hupakuo. And what you have in the, the word obey in Greek is an intensified version of the verb to hear. In other words, you cannot separate the concept of hearing and obeying, just as you cannot separate the concept of faith and obedience. If you hear God's word, that means you are going to obey it. If you have faith, that means you are going to be obedient to God. Faith and obedience are not contradictory terms as Calvinists would have us to believe. That leads us to our second point. Faith and obedience are related directly just like unbelief and disobedience. Notice what the Bible says in verse 18 and 19 of our text. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter into his rest, but those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Disobedience and unbelief here in verse 18 and 19 are used interchangeably. The opposite is also true. Faith or belief and obedience are interchangeable in Scripture. You cannot have one without the other. One does not exclude the other. They work hand in hand and must be seen simultaneously together. This brings us to our third point from this passage. It is possible for children of God to fall from grace and lose the promise that God has given them. Notice chapter 3, verse 12 again. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end while it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Salvation is conditional and it always has been. Being a child of God is not enough to save. You must become a child of God and then you must remain faithful. And that's what the Hebrew writer is wanting to warn them. He says, brethren, he's addressing Christians here. Brethren, you beware, lest there be in any of you a heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. It has everything to do with man's submission and obedience to God. Now, here's an important point I don't want you to miss. The condition of salvation is placed on man's willingness to obey, not, not God's ability to provide. If men miss out on salvation, it's not because God hasn't provided the way. The same was true with Israel as with the church. God provided them a way of inheriting the promised land. What happened? They rejected his gracious offer and they chose to disobey him and thus they lost the promise of the Holy Land. In the same way, the church, God's children, can lose their salvation, the promise of heaven, if they choose to reject God's gracious gift. Now, the possibility of rejection is a reality here, and he's thus warning them, giving them a strong reminder. Think back about Israel and remember the bearings that it has upon you today. This brings us to our fourth point. The Hebrew congregation was in the same place that the children of Israel were at Kadesh Barnea. And the point is this, salvation has always been by grace, through faith, and God has always required acts of faithful obedience. That was true of Israel, it's still true with the church. If we will not listen to God, and if we will not obey God, then we will not receive the promise of God. For the promise of God in salvation is conditional upon faith and obedience, just as it has always been. Great Salvation has always been by grace, through faith, not that not of ourselves, lest any man should boast, but with the idea of faithful obedience being involved there. Now let's bring a couple modern applications into view. 
Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7 through 19, provides some of the strongest teaching of Scripture advocating, number one, man has free will. Number two, you must listen to God speak. Number two, you must take that hearing and develop it into faith, which requires also, number four, that you have obedience in your life. This is also one of the strongest passages in all the Bible renouncing the false doctrine of once saved, always saved. Brethren, beware lest any of you lose your salvation is his, his, is his employ to them. Be careful. May the church listen to these words today. May we always listen to God as He speaks through His Word. May we have a faith that is obedient unto Him. And may we never choose to depart from the living God. Because outside of God's care and His plan of provision, there is no hope. And if we leave, if we leave God, just as Israel left God in the wilderness, the same result will occur. We will be lost and we will not inherit the promise of God. We thank you very much for tuning in and listening to another study in the book of Hebrews. Lord willing, uh, in our next video, we will begin where we left off in chapter 4 and go verses 1 through verse 13. Thanks. If you've missed some of our previous videos, be sure to go to our YouTube page and follow up and catch up with our study where we are. Thanks and have a great day.